transport of food and minerals in plants. All living organisms perform various vital activities to survive such as movement, transportation, circulation, respiration, nutrition, excretion, growth and reproduction. All these activities are collectively called life processes. Organisms may differ in shape and size but they perform certain similar activities. Nutrition is one such activity that is performed by all the living organisms. Nutrition Living organisms require energy to perform life process activities which is obtained through the food. Requirement of food in both plants and animals are basically the same. Foods are all those substances which on reaching the body synthesize protoplasm after digestion and produce energy. This energy is utilized in all the vital activities of life. The process of absorbing nutrients from food and processing them in the body to obtain energy in order to keep healthy or to grow is called nutrition. Classification on the basis of mode of nutrition Green plants prepare their own food material. Humans and animals do not prepare their own food but depend upon plants. Thus, on the basis of mode of nutrition, living organisms may be divided into two. 1. Autotrophic 2. Heterotrophic Autotrophic nutrition The organisms which prepare their own food are called autotrophs. Auto, self, trophic, food. And this type of nutrition is called autotrophic nutrition. Green plants prepare their food and are also called producers. They possess chlorophyll, especially in their leaves that have the ability to utilize solar energy and convert it into chemical energy, food, with the help of carbon dioxide and water and oxygen is released. This process is called photosynthesis. Heterotrophic nutrition The organisms which do not manufacture their own food material are called heterotrophs. Hetero, different, troughs, food. They depend on other organisms for their food and are also called consumers. They include fungi, bacteria, humans and animals. The mode of nutrition of animals are called holozoic type of nutrition. Heterotrophic nutrition in animals. The heterotrophs can be of these types. 1. Herbivores. The animals which depend upon green plants producers for their food. They are also called primary consumers. Examples. Goat, rabbit, cow, elephant, etc. 2. Carnivores. The flesh-eating animals are called carnivores. Examples, tiger, lion, snake, fox, etc. 3. Omnivores. The animals which eat both flesh and plants. Examples, dog, man, cat, crow, etc. 4. Scavengers. There are few animals that consume dead animals are called scavengers. Example, vultures. Heterotrophic nutrition in plants. There are plants like fungi and bacteria which do not possess chlorophyll and therefore cannot prepare their own food. Heterotrophic nutrition in plants can be of the following types. 1. Saprophytes. The plants which depend upon dead, decayed and rotten materials for their nutrition. Example, some bacteria and fungi, mushroom. 2. Parasites. The plants which depend upon other living organisms, plants or animals and take ready-made food from them. The plant taking such food is called a parasite and the organism from which food is taken is called the host. Examples, some bacteria, fungi, dodder, amarbale, etc. 3. Symbiotic plants The plants which live on other organisms and are mutually benefited from one another. Example, 
lichen the body of lichen constitutes of algae and fungi where an alga contains chlorophyll and prepares food where as fungal part gives shelter to the algae four insectivorous plants the insects eating plants are called insectivorous plants in these plants the leaves are modified which help in catching the insects examples pitcher plant sundew plant venus flytrap etc 5 decomposers there are certain microorganisms as bacteria fungi decompose the dead remains of plants and animals are called decomposers they maintain the balance of nutrients in nature autotrophic nutrition in plants the green plants prepare their own food through a process called photosynthesis photosynthesis all the green parts of the plants manufacture food material through the green pigment called chlorophyll it is a process in which green plants synthesize food from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight in this process oxygen is released carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight gives rise to food sugar plus oxygen 6 co2 plus 6 h2o in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives rise to c6 h12 o6 plus 6 o2 photosynthesis is the most vital process which is capable of using solar energy sunlight do you know that it is the largest single process which utilizes about 200 billion tons of carbon in the form of carbon dioxide each year and manufactures food all the essential commodities of life such as food coal diesel petrol oil oxygen etc are the by products of this process place of photosynthesis the phenomenon of photosynthesis takes place in the green parts of the plant it occurs mainly in the leaf and sometimes in the green stems the leaves have certain structures which help in photosynthesis the leaf has the following important structures that are helpful in photosynthesis one stomata these are the minute openings found on the surface of the leaf carbon dioxide enters through these pores and oxygen is released two chloroplast photosynthesis occurs in the leaves and green stems within a special structure called the chloroplast raw material these raw materials are required for photosynthesis one carbon dioxide it is taken from the atmosphere and enters through the stomata two water roots absorb water from the soil these raw materials are used during photosynthesis in the green pigments called chloroplast this can take place only in the presence of sunlight end product the end product of photosynthesis is the food in the form of carbohydrates in this process oxygen is released which is an important by product on which living organisms depend carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight in chloroplast gives rise to carbohydrate food plus oxygen thus it can be said that the leaf is a factory of food manufacture where solar energy is converted into chemical energy carbohydrate these carbohydrates are ultimately converted into different types of food material and stored in the roots stems and fruits stomata the minute openings mostly on the lower surface of the leaves are called stomata these openings are surrounded by two bean shaped cells called the gut cells gut cells contain chloroplasts this structure which includes the gut cells and a pore is called the stroma when the stomata open carbon dioxide and oxygen pass in or out respectively stomata close at night 
Factors Affecting Photosynthesis The process of photosynthesis is affected by these factors. 1. Light The rate of photosynthesis increases with the intensity of light. The rate of photosynthesis is maximum in red light. 2. Carbon Dioxide on increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide, the rate of photosynthesis increases. However, if the concentration is very high, it decreases. 3. Temperature The optimum temperature for photosynthesis is between 25 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. 4. Water It reduces with the decrease of water content. 5. Chlorophyll. If chlorophyll concentration is less, the rate of photosynthesis is adversely affected. Activity To demonstrate that light is essential for photosynthesis. Materials required A potted plant, leaves should be broad, black paper, iodine solution, alcohol, water, beaker, a test tube, tripod stand, wire gauge, and a burner. Methodology Keep the plant in a dark place for 2-3 to three days for de-starching. Partly cover the leaf with black paper so that sunlight does not reach the leaf. Keep the plant in light for 6 hours. Pluck the leaf from the plant. Remove the chlorophyll from the leaf by keeping it in boiling water. Wash the leaf in fresh water and spread over a dish. Spread a few drops of iodine solution over the leaf. Observation The exposed part to the light of the leaf turns blue in color. The covered portion of leaf remains colorless. Conclusion Starches formed due to photosynthesis where light could reach. Therefore, it proves that light is essential for photosynthesis. Note by keeping the plant in a dark place, de-starching is done. Since light is essential for photosynthesis, no starch formation will be there. Activity To demonstrate that chlorophyll is essential for the photosynthesis. Materials required Potted plant, croton or coleus, which have green and yellow parts, iodine solution, alcohol, water, beaker, test tube, tripod stand, wire gauge and burner. Methodology Keep the plant in a dark place for 2-3 to three days for de-starching. Keep the plant in light for 6 hours. Pluck the leaf from the plant. Remove the chlorophyll from the leaf by keeping it in boiling alcohol. Wash the leaf in fresh water and spread over a dish. Spread a few drops of iodine solution over the leaf. Observation Dark blue color is seen only in the green parts but the yellow parts do not turn blue. Conclusion This shows that starch formation takes place only in that part of leaf which has chlorophyll. Activity To demonstrate that oxygen is evolved in the process of photosynthesis. Materials required Beaker Test tube Funnel Hydrilla plant, aquatic plant, water and candle. Methodology A water-filled beaker is taken along with hydrilla plants. Insert some hydrilla plants in the inverted funnel. A test tube filled with water is inverted on the funnel. Keep this apparatus in sunlight. Observation You will see the bubbles of gas which displaces the water downwards. Conclusion This gas can be tested by introducing a burning candle, which remains burning. This proves that evolved gas is oxygen. Minerals for plants The plants need certain minerals for their growth. On the basis of required quantities, they are classified into 1. Macronutrients These are the elements that are required in large quantities. Example Nitrogen, Phosphorus, Potassium, Calcium, Iron, Sulphur and Magnesium. 2. Micronutrients 
these are the elements that are required in a very small quantity example copper zinc boron manganese and molybdenum they are also called trace elements deficiency diseases due to lack of nutrients nutrients diseases nitrogen yellowing of leaves chlorosis phosphorus poor growth premature leaf fall potassium shortening of plants iron yellowing of leaves calcium plants remain dwarf margin of leaves curled sulfur leaves become yellow or red